What's up everybody, it's your boy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If not, welcome back. And on today's video, we're gonna take a trip outside of the Denver metro area once again and go check out Dillon and Frisco, Colorado. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell to be alerted anytime I make new videos. I'm gonna try to upload one video a week going over everything Colorado and the Colorado real estate market. Before we get into it, as a quick reminder, I am a licensed real estate agent out here in the Denver metro area. So if you have any questions about moving to Denver or you need an agent in your local market, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to me at my information below and I'll be happy to help you in any way I can. Now with that out of the way, let's get into it. First, we need to figure out where exactly Dillon and Frisco are in relation to Denver. Uh, they're about an hour to an hour and a half outside of downtown Denver, of course, depending on traffic because you're going to be going down I-70. So if it's a holiday or if it's a weekend in general, it could be a little bit more packed. So just make sure you plan accordingly. Now, if you're planning on staying up there, you know, one, two, three, however many nights, you're going to want to grab a hotel and there are plenty of hotels or Airbnbs around. During the spring and summer months, they'll run you starting at about $150 a night and going up. And during the winter months, they'll get a little bit more expensive because of the ski traffic. So just plan for maybe 175 to 200 and up a night. Now let's talk about what there is to do in these small towns. And like I just mentioned, these are pretty big ski and snowboard towns. So number one on the list is going skiing and snowboarding. Now luckily you have plenty of mountains around to go check out. So you've got Copper Mountain, which is about 12 to 15 minutes away. Then you've got uh, Breckenridge, which is about 15 to 20 minutes. Then you've got Keystone around 20 to 25 minutes away. Uh, Arapaho Basin, which is about 25 to 35 minutes away. And then you've got Vail, which is about 30 to 40 minutes away. And this will all be dependent on traffic. Now, lift tickets will vary by mountain and by time that you're going, but you can get something like the Icon Base Pass, which is around $750 to $800. And that'll get you unlimited access to Copper Mountain and Winter Park, which is a little bit further out, and about five days during the year to Arapaho Basin. Plus, it'll give you access to, I think it's about 30 or so other mountains across the US and then a few in Canada. Or you can get the Epic Pass, which is gonna be a little bit cheaper, around 600 bucks. And then I'll get you access to Keystone, Breck, and Vail. Again, much like the Icon Pass, you'll also get access to around 30 other resorts all throughout Colorado, the US, and then some in Canada. Now, if you don't want a downhill ski, you can also do some cross country skiing, or there are plenty of places to go hiking with snowshoes, so you can do those as well. All right, next up is to hang out at the Dillon Reservoir or Dillon Lake during the summer and spring months. The Dillon Reservoir is actually the seventh largest body of water in Colorado, which just means there's plenty of space to take boats out, kayaks, stand up paddle boards, canoes, uh, and other water sports and water activities. Now, if you don't own a boat, there are actually marinas both in Dillon and in Frisco because they are on opposite sides of the lake. So you can go rent at either one. And if you're on the Dillon side, you can get a boat starting at about $130 for two hours up to their most expensive pontoon boat, which will run you about, I think it's about $425 for four hours. Now, if you go to the Frisco side, you can get a smaller fishing boat, which will run you about $75 for two hours. And then again, you can get a little bit larger pontoon boat for about $220 for two hours. And then if you want it longer than that, they have charges for each additional hour, so you just have to check those rates. You can also rent kayaks, canoes, stand-up paddle boards, and stand-up pedal boards, which I didn't know was a thing, but those range from anywhere from $40 to $80 per person. Now number three on this list is go check out the Dillon Amphitheater. 
It's a really cool amphitheater that sits right on the Dillon Reservoir with a backdrop of a couple of 13,000 plus foot peaks. So it's a great area, great environment. They have free concerts and paid concerts that run from about June all the way until mid or so September, of course, depending on the weather. They've also got some concession stand, beer stand, and food trucks. So if you need a drink or need some food while you're at the concert, you've got that option. They used to do movies on the water, pretty much similar to what Red Rocks does with the film on the rocks. Although I haven't seen them play any movies since about 2019, so not sure when or if they're gonna bring that back. And they also have a beer festival that they, they hold every year um, by the venue, but for 2021 that was canceled, so the next one won't be until 2022. And on the Frisco side, you can check out the concert in the park, which they play through the beginning of June to the beginning of September, and they have a concert every Thursday. Next on this list is one of my favorite things to do, and it's to find a trail and go mountain biking. Now, if you enjoy mountain biking, I highly recommend downloading the Mountain Bike Project app. It's just a, an app that pretty much shows you where all the trails are, how long they are, their current conditions, um, and their difficulty rating, so you can kind of get an idea of which trails are around you. Now, of course, being in the Rocky Mountains, there are plenty of trails to take your bike on, whether you're a beginner or an expert. Uh, if you want to take some a little bit calmer and don't want to do anything crazy, highly recommend the Dillon Dam Trail. It's a trail that follows the Dillon Reservoir starting in either Dillon or Frisco, whichever side you start on doesn't really matter. And it follows the uh, Dillon Reservoir for about six to six and a half miles. And the last thing on the list is the classic, just go hiking. Now there are plenty of trails just like there are for mountain bikes and also just like the mountain bikes Highly recommend downloading the All Trails app. That way you can get a kind of visual representation of where the trails are, their difficulty rating, their length, and their current conditions based on reviews. Now there are over 40 marked trails in the area, ranging from just under three miles to over 24 miles, and elevations of about 9,000 feet above sea level, all the way to about 13,800 feet above sea level. Now I want to keep this video somewhat short, so some honorable mentions are just to go explore each uh, town's downtowns, cool little downtown areas, plenty of places to eat. They usually shut off the main road and you can just eat in the street. Um, you could also go to the Dillon Ice Castles, which is a really cool ice castle formation during winter, of course. Um, or you can go across to Silverthorne and go to the golf course, and those are just a few things. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of things I left out, so if you have any questions about Dillon or Frisco, feel free to drop a comment or reach out, and I'll be happy to address those. And of course, if you have any additional questions about moving out here to Colorado in the Denver metro area, or if there's a certain part of Denver and Colorado you want me to uh, explore and cover, feel free to drop a comment or reach out to me and I'm happy, happy to make a video about it or answer any questions you might have. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one.